All right, so this will be a quick tutorial on sound effects. Uh, basically, all we're going to do is play an explosion sound every time you hit the keyboard. Um, there's a million ways to do it. This is how I'm going to choose to do it. There's a couple of things that we need to keep in mind when we do this one. Um, one of them is we need to have more than one sound playing at any given time because if we want to have multiple explosions, if we want to hit the spacebar multiple times, um, we need to have multiple explosions going off. We can't just you know, stop one explosion sound halfway through and restart it. Um, so we need to have multiple sounds occurring at the same time. And that's where this gets um, a little bit complicated, but it's not going to be too bad. Uh, essentially what we're going to do is we will create a prefab that gets instantiated. Uh, part of that prefab is a sound file that has play on wake checked, and then after a period of time it will delete itself. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we'll do it all right now. So I'm going to create uh, this thing called sound effect. It's going to be 2D and we will create this project. Um, this is the sound effect that I'm using for this one. It's uh, freesound.org. It's Creative Commons license, so definitely check it out um, if you want to use this exact sound or you know go to this website and find more sounds or make your own. Um, okay, so I'm going to create uh, a couple things. I'm going to create an empty game object and we're just going to call it uh, keyboard controller. Um, this will be pretty simple, but I'm going to do a, a couple things that uh, you know that may be new, depending on where you're coming from. Um, the only thing this thing is going to look for is for key presses. Um, if you're you know have a have a person shooting a gun or something like that, maybe you have it attached to a player. But since we have this brand new scene, um, I'm just going to make an empty game object that's going to hold a script that's going to look for spacebar presses. And with that, I will uh, create a C sharp script, and we will just call it keyboard keyboard controller and I will attach it to this keyboard alright so we'll come in here later on and modify the script to um, to watch for the spacebar press and then actually play the sound the way we're gonna play the sound is we're gonna create an object that the only thing it does is play that sound once so I am going to create another empty game object Oops. and make sure it's not a child see how mine is a child of this keyboard controller we don't want that let's move it up and this thing I'll rename it to um, what do we want to call it shoot sound how about explosion more of an explosion sound than anything um, and on this thing we need to drag in our sound so let me drag that thing in atomic bomb dot wave I'll drag the sound right in here to assets um, and then I will, on my explosion sound, I will drag this thing over to it. Um, and now it's here. A couple things. We're going to make it a 2D sound. Um, and we're not going to do anything with these 3D um, sound settings. It's always just going to be right here. And if I play this thing, we hear our explosion. All right. I am going to change this background because it drives me crazy. Um, anyway, so when we hit play, this object is instantiated, and since we have play on wake checked over here, it plays on wake. Um, what I'm going to do is create this thing, uh, 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 create a prefab out of this. So I drag the explosion sound down into our assets. And what this does, this allows us to create this thing on the fly. So we don't need to have it when we first start our game up. So I'm going to delete it out of here. Um, and now we, need, we have a couple things. We have this thing, it'll play at once, um, and then we need this keyboard controller here to instantiate this object. So I'm going to open up this piece of source code here. We're writing a few lines of code today. It won't be very bad. Um, and here we go. Yeah, let me zoom in on that a little bit. All right, so all we need to do is we're going to check for the keyboard presses. And we've done this in other videos. So I'm going to go kind of fast through this. But I'll say if input.get key down, key code dot space and again sorry I'm using this kind of different mic um, but it was the quickest way I could get that you could actually hear the sounds playing <laughs> um, so you will hear lots of clicking and mouse moving and all of that kind of stuff and, and but anyways hopefully it's not that annoying all right so here we go if it's the space bar then we need to create our little sound prefab. So we're going to have a public game object and we're going to call it explosion sound. All right. 
And because we made this thing public, we're going to have to go link that up inside of Unity in a sec. When we go into Unity, we'll drag in our prefab um, and populate this property. Uh, but right now, we're just going to write the rest of the code here. So if input.getKeyDown, keyCode.space, then we need to instantiate a copy of this object. So we will say instantiate explosion sound. Um, it wants to know where it's going to go. And so we will just say uh, transform dot position, which is where we're at. And then this last piece is a rotation, which we don't need to rotate our sound. Could if we wanted to. I don't exactly know why you would want to, but we'll do that. Okay, so this is going to create our sound object and uh, this one will create it wherever we're at, wherever this prefab or wherever this keyboard controller happens to be located. Right now it's right in the middle of our screen and uh, we're not going to rotate anything. So this is the code that we're going to write for this keyboard controller and if I go back into Unity and click on it, now we have this property over here. Um, it says explosion sound and I can drag our explosion sound prefab on top of that. And now when I hit play, and I hit the space bar, an explosion plays. And notice it creates an explosion uh, instance over here. And if I keep oops, if I keep hitting the space bar, I can get multiple uh, copies of this thing playing. But also note, um, these things are hanging out forever, right? They're never cleaning themselves out up. They're just there. Um, and that's pretty bad because every time you shoot, um, even though we don't hear it, this is taking up resources. So we're going to put a little script on our explosion sound prefab to clean this thing up when it's finished playing. And, um, and that should, should take care of it for us. Um, so this thing is a few seconds long. The way we're going to do this is I'm just going to set a timer um, on our prefab and just tell it to delete itself. So there's multiple ways we could do that. Inside this keyboard controller, we could keep track of all of these um, explosion sounds that we in instantiate. That's fine. Um, but for me, it's just easier to write another script that will get attached to this prefab that will delete the object when it's finished playing. So I'm going to create a new C -sharp script, and we will call it explosion. We can call it explosion sound again. Why not? Um, and I'll click on my prefab and I will drag this thing over here. So now this explosion sound script is on this prefab and, um, and that's good to go. And then now, whoops, I hit save. I'm going to save the scene. I'll just call it one. Sorry, out of habit, I hit command S. All right, anyways, so uh, now we have this prefab. We have this explosion sound script on it and I'm going to open that up. And um, we're just going to write this thing, write a little thing to delete it after a few seconds. So um, we'll delete it after, let's say, five seconds. I mean, there's better ways to do it, like more accurate ways. But for what we're doing, we'll just say we'll delete after five seconds. I think it's like a two or three second, or like a three or four second sound bite. So, but anyways, uh, we will write a function called void destroy self. And actually, instead of void, this will be an I enumerator. And I'll show you why we do that in a sec. So we will say uh, yield return new wait for seconds. And in this case, we'll just say 5f. Again, this is really quick ways to do things. Um, there's much cleaner ways. But if you're looking at how to get up and going, this is a quick way to do it. Um, and then in, after that, we will say uh, destroy. Just destroy game object, which is ourself. Um, and then inside of here, we need to launch this I enumerator. So we'll say start coroutine uh, destroy self. Like that. And so this is what we've got. We've got a function called destroy self. As soon as this uh, script starts, which, which is when we hit the spacebar, we instantiate a new object. So there's going to be multiple copies of this. There'll be one copy of this for every sound we have playing at a given time. Um, so when we start it up, we will set this thing. We will call this destroy self. First thing we do inside this I enumerator is we're going to wait for five seconds. 
As soon as that five seconds elapses, then we're going to destroy ourselves. Right? That's how the script works. And if we go back and we're lucky, see what happens. I will press the spacebar. We get our object over here on the left, and after five seconds, it deletes itself and it's gone. So now I can I can have multiple sounds going, and as they go away, they will delete themselves. So now it's nice and clean. Um, we never have more than we need in memory at a given time, and um, that's a pretty good way to do it. So I, like I said, there's different ways. Uh, to do it. Maybe you can find better ways to do it, but this is uh, a good way to get you going and you won't end up having all these sounds laying around. You're able to play multiple copies at once and uh, I think it's a good way to do it.